Going to read an excerpt from the book Rebound Rules by Rick Pitino because it's just an inspiring story and it reminds me of something that I experienced when coaching AAU two years ago. <clears throat> we rallied from 10 down in the final minute to beat Tennessee my first year at Louisville and in 2005 we trailed West Virginia by 20 points in an NCAA tournament regional final game and won to reach the final four. Here is the common denominator in all those comebacks. He mentioned several other comebacks. They began with positive energy on the floor, on the bench, and in the team huddles. They began with a belief that things would get better if we persevered through adversity, trusted each other, and worked together. They began with a conviction that consistent effort, even against long odds, inevitably would turn the tide. They began with a reliance on the fundamentals that made us a successful team to begin with, and we didn't desert them in a crisis. They began with a single good play and certainty that one good play would lead to another and another and another and another until the deficit was gone and the game was won. The most important thing I did in the course of those comebacks was to build my players' self-esteem. Don't tear them down for the mistakes that got the team in those holes to begin with. Build them up to the point where they felt capable of making the plays that would result in victory. That's Rick Pitino. Rebound rules is the book. Two years ago, I was coaching AAU, and I was working with another coach that was more successful than me, older than me, more established than me. And as the team that we were coaching, who were down 23 points in an AAU state championship game, D3 state championship, but still a championship nonetheless, those players worked incredibly hard to get there. And the coach that I was working with kept citing, they don't want it today. They keep complaining. They're not hitting shots. They suck today. These negative things that held some truth to it, but held absolutely no value in the situation that we were in. We, we had won a semifinal game. Um, we had won a bunch of games to get to this scenario and just stating the negative things that were happening and, and breaking these players down, it did no good. It wasn't holding players accountable. It was negativity. And I don't say this, you know, to bring the guy down that I was working with, but the only thing that got those kids motivated enough to believe they could win is unbreakable positivity, uh, a relentless belief that, like Rick Pitino in that book says, if you make one good play and you stick together, there's going to be another good one and another good one. And through that, we find momentum. Through that, we find an incredible, incredibly wrinkled shirt. No, but through that, there's momentum. And that positivity, it goes from the bench to the floor, back to the team huddles, and it creates kind of a cycle of belief and that runs through the veins of your team if you do it right and I don't have all the answers as a coach but I know that day I specifically decided that I wasn't going to listen to the guy that I'm working with or coaching under I was going to take it upon myself to constantly be motivating inspiring and to be positive and that isn't the style that you use in every game but it was a championship. There's no accountability necessary. I don't care about the mistakes you made. Sure, if you continuously make mistakes and your motor isn't there, you might get subbed out. But what these boys did and what I believe I allowed them to do is to take it upon themselves to be leaders, to take it upon themselves to be decision makers because you motivate them and you, you, you try to breathe the self-esteem necessary for them to be confident in the face of adversity. And if they can create the hope and really believe in that hope in the face of crisis, which is a loss, getting to the championship and losing in a championship is absolutely heartbreaking. So you let the players make decisions for themselves, you inspire them, and you coach everyone differently. Some guys, you have to yell at them a little bit, get in their case, but it always ends on a positive. Some guys, you got to sit with them on the bench and say, hey, me and you, deep breathing, let's go. You're too riled up right now. Let's meditate a little bit. With some guys, you might say, hey, what do you see out there? What do you see? I, 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 I'm not out there with you. 
Is there something going on that, that we can do to make a difference? And if you give players the ability to step up and you let them be decision makers, you'd be surprised how often they make good decisions. One of the proudest moments I had coaching that game when we were down 23 and we came back to win. One of the proudest moments I had is after my player knew that he had the green light to speak up in a huddle, which I think is really important for players to speak up in huddles. You got to give them the green light. Make sure they know that's okay because they're going to be nervous in that situation. I gave him the green light a few minutes before. I asked him what he saw. He took the whiteboard from me with my okay, and he wrote out a new play on how we would beat their zone defense. Right? He's a guard. He decides he wants to play in a big man role or start in the corner. And through him drawing in two defenders, he'd be able to find our other big man or our original big man who'd be slashing from free throw line and and, and, and cutting to the basket. So we have a, a guard who decides to play out of position, who decides to, in the timeout, in the huddle, draw out the play and and draw out the new way we're going to do this. And he says, and if this doesn't work, we have option two here and option three here. And that was it. I didn't make up the play that got us several baskets in a row in order to, um, in order to come back in that game. I might have preached positivity. I might have hyped them up. I might have really gotten loud when we were pressing and tried to make sure all my players are getting loud and and aggressive on that press, making sure we get up, get up, get higher, go faster, be more aggressive on that full court press. But it's the player who had the confidence to take the whiteboard and draw out a new set that I couldn't see. So like Rick Pitino said, you need to get that positivity going and you have to have that belief that you're going to win even if you're down by 23 points. That game that I coached was one of the proudest moments I had coaching. And if a coach, his coach at the D1 level and the NBA level, if he preaches that, then I think we can all learn something from it too. You have to give your players wings. Don't give them restrictions. Yeah. Keep grinding. Get after it. Peace.